Welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaboration between the United States Small Business Administration Hawaii District Office and its resource partners. Uh, my name is Dennis Kwok from the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific. Um, the Think Tech, I mean, uh, Adventures in Small Business is a collaboration and uh, we showcase small businesses here in Hawaii. Uh, today we have Mr. Alex Simpson from Southern and Pacific Lending Group. Alex, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yes. it's uh, pretty cool to have you here. Uh, we, we just met, uh, Alex and I just met, and uh, what we're trying to do is uh, kind of get into, uh, you know, financial tips for small businesses. Um, and uh, maybe before we go into that, I want to ask you about uh, yourself and your background, um, you know, when you came to Hawaii and mm -hmm. your experience in the military. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was born and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I'm one of six kids, uh, middle child. My parents, uh, they own a farm out there. They're still running it today. Um, I went to college in Florida, and that's where I joined the ROTC program uh, scholarship with the National Guard. And then um, in 2012, when I graduated, uh, the Hawaii Army National Guard picked me up to uh, fly helicopters for them. So that's when I moved out uh, to Hawaii in 2012. and. Um, uh, was soon sent off uh, to flight school, which is which is on the mainland, and then uh, married my wife, who uh, I met in college, and then we moved out here uh, together. Oh, very cool. So um, obviously, you know, uh, being in the National Guard um, part time, you have to have you know a civilian job to parallel that with. So I had uh, various civilian jobs um, until. Uh, Two years ago when my brother, uh, who started this company on the East Coast, offered me a partnership um, to you know, do work with him, and then eventually we decided to develop the Hawaii market, okay. which has turned out to be a great opportunity for us. Okay. And uh, Southern Pacific, uh, can you talk about what you guys do particularly? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we are a, um, a commercial loan a brokerage firm. Uh, we specialize in finding financing for small business owners to grow their business. Uh, we're very flexible with the products that we can procure for them, but we also have the industry experience that allows us to get things done that maybe a normal uh, broker wouldn't be able to do. Okay. Um, so uh, your most popular, I mean, so you're a loan brokerage, so mm -hmm. uh, you're looking working with small businesses, trying to get them uh, the best kind of financing out there. Yep. Um, what are the terms in terms of uh, loan amounts that you guys work with? Yeah, so uh, our range is from 10000 up to $10 million. Wow, that's a pretty big yeah. range. Yeah, but obviously I would say the, the most common loan amount we're looking at is, is below $2 million Okay. Because we are helping mainly small businesses and uh, they will usually fall within that category. Okay. Um, are there any specific industries that you see more in Hawaii as opposed to maybe your brother sees out in the East Coast? Uh, yeah, our portfolio is pretty mixed, but um, you know, typically what we'll see is industries that traditional lending institutions would consider high risk that they really don't like uh, lending to, uh, even if uh, you know, their financials are good. So those would be food industry and auto, and uh, construction. But in Hawaii, you have a lot of um, you know, large retailers and, and government institutions, so that usually comes with uh, irregular cash flow cycles for a lot of small businesses, which um, is not ideal from a lending perspective mm -hmm. because you're not getting paid every month by sure. your, your, um, your clients. You know, government can take up to six months to Ability. There's always a lag, yeah, when you're working yeah. with the federal or even um, state. Yeah, state right. So that's a, you know that's kind of a, a nightmare from a cash flow perspective. Right. Um, but you know those are those are large contracts and businesses can pick those up and grow pretty quickly with those. Yeah. But from a lending perspective, those are tough because of that that irregular cycle. Yeah. Um, so in your experience, so what, what kind of businesses would you like to work with? I mean, are there specific industries or specific sizes? Um, that uh, you particularly like look for? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, really what we, you know, businesses we enjoy uh, working with are, are smaller businesses 
Um, I would say that uh, it, it becomes easier to help businesses out when they're doing over a million dollars every year in revenue, although that's not always the case. So we'll absolutely help out um, smaller businesses that are doing less than that. Um, usually a business with a strong uh, foundation that's really seeking to grow and secure capital to grow their business. So we like to work with motivated uh, clients that are ready to find options and creative solutions to get their business to the next level. Um, so, you know, uh, the VBOC of the Pacific, the organization that uh, I run, uh, we're very, you know, um, on the grounds and working with small businesses. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest concerns that uh, our clients have or our, uh, yeah, our customer base has is access to capital. Yeah. And that is a big, you know, it's a big, you know, kind of a unknown for a lot mm -hmm. of them. Um, and the reason is, is that traditional lenders, a lot of them, they don't like working with startup. Um, yep. Is that something that uh, you see in your organization as well? Do you see uh, kind of more of a risk working with startup companies or companies that are just getting started? don't have like uh, any kind of historical data? Yeah, so obviously startups are, are considered high risk um, within the, uh, the, lending, um, uh, the lending realm. Uh, so yeah, so you're right. Traditional lending institutions will not like to do startups, even if it is a SBA-backed loan. So we work with a lot of startups. Um, yeah, we see that a lot. Um, those can be somewhat strenuous because you aren't working with an established business that is already has revenue. Um, and then typically the only way to get financing for those um, businesses is to go through an SBA loan program, which is a great program um, because it, you know, it, they do startups. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, without that, uh, you would see a lot less startups most yeah, likely. Of course. But that process can be pretty strenuous um, and discouraging if, if you're just starting to, um, you know, start your business. Right, of course. Yeah. And talking about starting your business, when you started, or actually uh, your brother, he's the mm -hmm. founder of the uh, S&P. Yes. Okay. Yeah. When your brother started the business, I mean, what was his motivation? I'm pretty sure you guys talked about it, you know, you being a partner. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you had some say in uh, how this business was. Is it uh, was finance or um, economics something that you or small business lending is that something that you felt passionate about? I mean, how do you how does one uh, helicopter pilot go into uh, you know lending or uh, you know commercial lending? Yeah, I mean it really all started with my brother. He okay. was a business banking officer for a U.S. bank okay. and a Fifth Third Bank, um, and he was working uh, at those banks and. You know, obviously, traditional lending institutions, they have very strict underwriting requirements, especially for, for business lending. So he was turning down a lot of small businesses that uh, were pretty healthy and just needed, needed the extra capital mm -hmm. to, to grow, uh, which was, I'm sure, discouraging for him. Um, so he decided to go off and start his own firm and essentially take the experience he had and uh, bring in the flexibility of working with a portfolio of lenders who could do a lot of things um, that one traditional institution couldn't do. Um, he was very successful even in his first year and um, he wanted to work with someone who he trusted so that's when he reached out to me. Uh, I've never had an interest specifically in small business lending mm -hmm. uh, but I loved finance uh, and economics and when he told me more about Kind of clients he was helping, uh, it really got me thinking that I could do something that I really enjoyed, mm -hmm. also helping a lot of clients at the same time. Yeah, it, it really is. Uh, when you work in actually, you know, uh, economic development mm -hmm. or lending, uh, there is kind of intrinsic value in that, that mm -hmm. you're helping small business in the yeah. community that you live in. Um, so you being in Hawaii, how has that? I mean, it's very very different market. My assumptions from the Tennessee market. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, our, our East Coast market and the Hawaii market is definitely, there's a lot of differences. Um, I would say in Hawaii, you have um, a lot less options. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, I work very closely with the local banks um, to help their clients out, and they do a really good job with what they can do. But um, there's usually not too much gray area when you're working with, with the bank sure. as far as business lending. 
they, their underwriting requirements are very specific and very, uh, very strict. So, uh, yeah, we do see that um, it is a little bit harder to get financing in Hawaii, business financing. Um, you know, sometimes a client will come to me after they've been turned down by a few different banks. Um, luckily, we work with national lenders. Most of them are out of the mainland that can do a lot of uh, really unique things to get a business competitive term. And is there, are there, I mean, when you go and work with small businesses and they're not, let's just say that, uh, you know, their lending profile isn't very strong. Sure. Um, you know, do you say to them sometimes, hey, you know, it's just not even worth it. I mean, do you have to turn down small businesses sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's uh, something we run into every once in a while. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I don't like wasting anyone's time. So, uh, you know, I, right off the bat, I, I like to ask a few questions in the consultation and I'll let the client know, hey, there is possibility to get something done. I might need, the, you know, some extra documentation to review or I really can't help you right now. Mm -hmm. But we have a, a bunch of uh, referral partners that we work with that, you know, say, you know, if it comes down to certain issues, say it's a credit issue, mm -hmm that we can refer out to to help that client get into a uh, good standing to be able to you know, secure capital for their business. Oh, that's nice. So it's yeah. kind, of a, kind of a holistic approach and you ask them to, you know, you work on them as mm -hmm. a better client. Yeah, to absolutely. make them bankable more. Absolutely. And uh, you say that you have a lot of partners out in the mainland. Mm -hmm. So all the underwriting is done in the mainland. Yeah, I mean, we pre-underwrite everything. Okay. Our, when we source a, uh, a deal to one of our lenders. Our approval rate is 95%. Oh. So we're very meticulous about uh, what kind of finance we, that's good for the client mm -hmm. and who we're going to place it with so that they get competitive terms. Um, we're going to take a little short break uh, and uh, we will come back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll take a short break and then we'll come back okay. in a minute. Thanks. Great. Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stan the Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life, and the lives of people around you. Tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. And welcome back to uh, Adventures in Small Business. I'm Dennis Kwok. I'm here with uh, Mr. Alex Simpson from S&P Lending. Uh, just continuing our conversation, Alex. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Working with small businesses, uh, very similar. I mean, we have very different jobs, but you work, we both work with small businesses. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest kind of challenges that you see with small businesses, especially in terms of lending, kind of mm -hmm. mistakes that make they make? You know, what do you see uh, in your kind of experience? Yeah, so from a lending standpoint, there's really three big things that uh, every lender is going to look at. Um, time in business is uh, one of those. So. Typically, a traditional lending institution is going to be very apprehensive about lending to a business that's less than two years' time in business. Right. Um, obviously, if you just started your business and uh, you're within that time frame, there's really nothing you can do about it. Um, when it comes to uh, making mistakes um, in small businesses when you have more than two years that I see that can restrict uh, a business from getting a loan that they need would be that they decide to restructure or rename their business and they form a separate entity now and reorganize. 
Sometimes that's not a problem uh, if they don't change the name too much. But if they do do that, uh, lenders can look at that as a new business, mm -hmm. even though the ownership's the same, what they do is, is the same. And that will basically restart their clock for time in business. Yeah. So we see that uh, uh, quite often. Yeah, and we see that too, uh, especially when, let's say, a uh, business, they change their entity type too. Like they yes. went from a LLC to, let's say, a C corporation or yeah. vice versa. We'll see uh, that kind of clock reset. We mm -hmm. see that too. Any other kind of challenges or kind of mistakes that you see often and you're like, oh, this is something that you guys should try to avoid? Yeah, so the second category um, that lenders will look at is personal credit. And that's probably the most important. And uh, a lot of people don't know that personal credit weighs so heavily in uh, not just lending in general, but def definitely business lending. Right. Because they think, oh, well, you know, this is a business. Why would they look at my personal credit? And what a lender is looking at is, hey, their personal credit's really good. That means their whole life they've paid their bills on time and they're responsible. They're probably going to run their business the same way. Um, and that scoring model is very developed, so lenders feel very comfortable using personal credit um, to qualify businesses. Unfortunately, when you have less than two years' time in business and it's very hard to secure capital, you start using a lot of your personal finances to fund your business. Yeah, right. So sometimes that's inevitable, but that can lead, uh, kind of dig a hole for small business owners because now their credit utilization is very high and their personal credit score is now very low mm -hmm. because of that or for various reasons. And now they're able to get competitive financing because they have you know, more than two years time in business, but now they can't because their credits yeah. Uh, lower than what uh, the underwriters want to see. So that's something we see a lot of too, is, is uh, not separating personal and business finances yeah. uh, is, is a big mistake that, that businesses will make. And uh, you know, to put you on the spot, what is a good credit score in the eyes of S&P lending? Or what kind of uh, you know, credit scores would you like to see? Yeah, absolutely. Have? So we can typically get financing for clients who are as low as 600. Kind of the traditional threshold for banks is gonna be 680, mm -hmm. sometimes more than that. Yeah. I would say ideally we like it to be above 650 okay. because when you start dropping below 650, that's where you really start losing options as far as types of competitive right. uh, loan product. Yeah, for sure. So 650, yeah, that's where I have a magic number. Yeah, but we can, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go, go yeah, we'll go to 600. Yeah, I mean, that's a big challenge for a lot mm -hmm. of small businesses. Yeah. Any other kinds of uh, challenges that you see, and maybe not fiscal challenges that they make, but uh, other kinds of challenges that uh, you, when you work with small businesses? Yeah, absolutely. The, the third and last category that uh, lenders are looking at is cash flow. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if you're a startup, you don't, you don't yeah. have cash flow, right? But you have projections, so that's mm -hmm. good. Um, but what we do see in, in businesses that are doing some good revenue that start to, to grow is mm -hmm. they don't secure capital um, in anticipation of growth. So kind of what you see is a business that wants to grow is that they'll take two steps forward and then three steps back because they decided to grow quickly, but they didn't have the, the capital to ease their cash flow. So then they put themselves in these very tight cash flow situations and then they start having to shed business that they picked up during their growth period. And then they, you know, they, they take those steps backwards. So I, I think it's very important for businesses to secure some kind of, um, some kind of credit facility mm -hmm. or loan prior to growing so that they can ease their cash flow and not have to um, you know, cut back mm -hmm. if, if they grow too quickly. And in your portfolio, do you guys have more uh, lines of credits or more term loans? Or yeah, I think uh, probably mostly term loans, although okay. lines of credits are, are obviously very popular product. Um, however, you know, once you, once your credit score, you know, drops below probably 640, you start losing uh, options for lines of credits. Okay, yeah. You know. um, and what is, I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, you being a general partner, what kind of, a, what is your vision for S&P lending? Where would you like your portfolio to go? Um, would you like to expand to other markets? And are you currently working in the, on the other islands outside of Wall? 
Yeah, so we, we help clients in all 50 states. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have physical presences in Nashville and Hawaii. Um, and we are really good at what we do, and we have a great book of business on the mainland and in Hawaii. And I think as far as growth, um, I think we're just kind of happy doing what we're doing right now okay. uh, with the team we have. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's better to stay small, of course. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, very unique markets that you guys chose. You sure. Yeah, yeah. It's not the big markets, but that's definitely means. And you being from Tennessee, uh, how mm -hmm. have you adjusted to living here? Yeah, I mean, I haven't lived in Tennessee since I was 17. Oh, okay. So it's been a while. Um, yeah. It's been a while, yeah. but, uh, you know, I love Hawaii. Uh, okay. The weather's great. Uh, you don't, you have, you know, kind of the, the Florida um, beauty without the humidity, which yeah. is great. Um, and then, you know, obviously, the island's beautiful. The people are very generous, and very welcoming. Um, the food's amazing, which is really mm. uh yeah, kind of my, my weakness. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, before we started the interview, you were saying that uh, you're thinking about or uh, kind of getting out of the U.S., I mean, the uh, Army National Guard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I've, uh, it's been a great experience, and I really love my time uh, with the Hawaii Army National Guard. I really uh, want to focus more on my family and, uh, you know, taking care of our parents. And, and, uh, Very cool. Yeah. And, uh, um, maybe spend more, I mean, because you do this maybe part-time currently, or you... Full-time. Full-time, yeah. full-time, okay. Full -time. You do it full-time, okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, any other kind of tips or uh, for small business owners um, that you can give? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, just from a lending perspective, yeah. I think expectation is very important. Um, you know, depending on what you're, you're trying to do with your business and the amount of capital you need to grow. It's very important to kind of understand um, what uh, is out there and, and, and what um, banks or other uh, non-traditional lending institutions are going to look for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are you going to, uh, I mean, for S&P lending, um, do you have a physical office here or do you mostly um, do uh, your meetings online or... Remotely. Yeah, it's all, it's, you know, I have a home office, but okay. yeah, so I'm, I'm just out and about meeting clients face-to-face, -face, okay. uh, which is, I, I believe, is kind of the cornerstone of our, our business is, is uh, you know, forging those relationships mm -hmm. and, um, you know, really helping people at that level. Okay. Uh, so how long does it take for a loan to get processed uh, with the S&P? Yeah, depending on you know what you're looking for, you know we can we can fund it in as quick as three days. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, obviously, depending on the the loan amount and, and what's going on with your business, it could take longer. Of course, uh, you know, three to four weeks. Sure. And that's one of the kind of challenges that we face is that a lot mm -hmm. of uh, business owners they have a, they complain that it takes so long for them to yep. get funding. Yeah. You know, when they're looking for money, sometimes it's, it might be at a crucial state in sure. your business life cycle. And, uh, you know, an SBA loan is, is really a, a great product uh, for, for businesses that are having trouble with other um, lending institutions. But, uh, S, you know, the SBA program, uh, you know, from, from start to funding takes, you know, three to six months. Right. So that's, you know, so that's also another. And that's what I kind of wanted to touch on with expectations is you got to, you know, understand some of these, uh, some of these things take uh, longer than you'd like. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. Um, you know, just to wrap up here, uh, you know, uh, we do really appreciate you coming on the show. And I actually love hearing perspectives on the lending perspective, mm -hmm. too, because, you, know, um, you know, being in the economic development, one of the biggest challenges is access to capital for a yeah. lot of small business owners. Mm -hmm. um, so getting that perspective is really good. And I hope that the VBOC of the business can, you know, we get to work together. I mean, you know, we work with a lot of local lenders, but yeah. it's always good to have other options and uh, it's good to have you in the Hawaii market. And I really wish you a lot of success in the future. Thank yeah. you, Dennis. I yeah, appreciate thank it. you for coming on the show. Uh, my name is Dennis. Uh, thank you for joining us on Adventures in Small Business. Uh, we'll see you soon. Aloha.